That's better. What's up guys, how are you doing? If you haven't been to my channel before, my name's Philip Scrubber. I'd love it if you subscribed. This month we've been growing so fast. I mean, 350 subscribers in a month is insane. I absolutely love it. I love that we're building a community, so thank you every single one of you that has subscribed. The rubber glove. Oof. <laughs> Why do I have a rubber glove in front of me? Well, it saved my life today. I don't know if you can see my hand. That's, that is this guy right here. Um, my filter was stuck on my lens. Um, no tapping, no rubber bands were helping, so what I did is I got this rubber glove, put it over the filter, gave the lens a good tug, and it popped off. So if you have a rubber glove at home, it's going to help you get your filter off. <laughs> Don't listen to that guy. Um, can you vlog on this lens? Yeah, I thought I'd just quickly show you. Now this is 24 millimeters, and I want to show you the cool thing you can do, because you can switch it around and show your surroundings. And at the moment I'm in Arturovec in Poland, and it's zero Celsius, which is what, 30 Fahrenheit? If you guys check out what these people are doing. Now, I'm gonna switch to Super 35 to show you what the 70 millimeter looks like at Super 35. And that right there is Super 35. So you can see like all these crazy, crazy people in that freezing water. Um, and if I zoom back out, that's 24 millimeters at Super 35. Let me just stop recording and switch back. And that's back to 24 millimeters without the Super 35. Um, so yeah, it's, um, you can vlog with this lens and um, it looks pretty cool, huh? Back to Phil. What we're talking about today is this. Whew. This is a beautiful lens. <clears throat> Let's pop it open. Comes in a nice little bag like this. Ooh. That is it. And this is a sharp lens and um, it's pretty expensive as well. This lens comes in at $2,200, which is more expensive than the Sony a7 III. And it weighs 1.36 kilo, which is about three pounds. So if you're looking to buy a gimbal, um, Sony um, 24 to 70 GM will have trouble on a few of them. For example, the Ronin SC might not be able to handle it. The Ronin S will, out of experience. Um, it's a beautiful lens. It's a fixed 2.8 lens, a constant. So whether you're at 24 millimeter or 70, it's gonna stay at 2.8. It's not like one of those lenses where it goes from 3.5 to 5.6. So when you're filming and you're zooming in nice and smooth, your image is getting darker. That's annoying, huh? This lens doesn't do that. Let's talk about the build quality. Now the build quality on this lens is absolutely stunning. Look right there. That is, that is the focus ring. Now the focus ring is smooth. It's got a little bit of resistance, but it feels absolutely stunning. It's probably the smoothest focus ring I've ever tried. It's got this nice rubber kind of grip and it feels, it just feels great. The next ring is your little button here. It's like a programmable button. It's usually used for a focus lock button. I don't ever use it. And it's got a nice little logo above it, which is just like a G. I think that stands for gangster. Um, the next one is your, your zoom ring, which is also wonderful resistance. It's like you want to zoom it in and out every day. Yeah, it's got a lock on it. So if you lock it, it stays at 24. Um, now, if you rattle it really hard, it's not going to come undone like some of the lenses. It's just going to stay there. So that's a really good point. And the last ring and my favorite ring is the AF. MF switch. So if you're filming and you're being really, really cool about it <laughs> and you're filming in say automatic focus con um, continuous, right? And you want to do like a cool pull out shot where it's sharp and it goes into like blurry out of focus. All you have to do is just flip it and you're in manual focus. And that, that is fantastic because I use that a lot and it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to go into my camera, change it from continuous to manual. And you know, it, it, it's annoying. Next thing is right here. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is your rubber seal. And it should be on every lens, but it's not. It's on this lens, so let's be happy about that. It will kind of make you more confident when you're filming in snow, in rain. It will keep out the moisture, the dust, you know. <clears throat> beautiful lens, absolutely beautiful lens. It's, it's very heavy, don't get me wrong, it is heavy. Um, I love the glass, I mean, just look at that, doesn't that, doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? 
So performance-wise, uh, if you're on, an, on an APS-C camera, by the way, you're looking at 36 millimeter to 105, so a completely different focal length. But if you're a photographer and you're looking for this lens, which a lot of photographers really do have this lens, it's either nifty 50 or this or both, um, <clears throat> you're starting at 24 meters going up to 70. So from wide to short um, telephoto. Your 24 millimeters you can do for like landscapes, for cityscapes, for travel photography. Then it'll pop up to 35, which is no doubt my favorite focal length I use for portraits, for cityscapes, landscapes, for travel, for fashion. It's an absolutely awesome focal length, um, especially at 2.8. Um, you can go up to 50, which is the nifty 50. I think everybody knows what a 50 looks like. And then you go up to 70. Now, this lens at 70 millimeters, let me show you has a minimal focus distance. Warning. ...of 38 centimeters, which is that? That's insane. Um, that really is very short. And you can see that the actual focal plane is, is so tiny, it's like a centimeter at 2.8. So that, that almost makes it look like a macro lens and you have to be really, really steady um, when you're filming because it's just tiny. Same if you go to 24, sure it's wider, but the focal plane, it's just, it's tiny, it's really in a few centimeters. So that's a really beautiful thing about this lens, it gives it the kind of like pro look, it isolates whatever subject you're shooting. If you're filming, this guy um, in autofocus is amazing, just like photography. Photography, this guy is blazing fast in autofocus, like choo -choo 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 -choo. Um, If you're filming, um, this guy has a sonic, supersonic wave motor inside it, which means that when it's Pulling focus, it sounds like this. That's it. Amazing. Really quiet. It's not like the 50 millimeter 1.8 Nifty 50, which just goes zzz, 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 drive you mad. Um, and like I said, when you're zooming from 28 to 70, there is no change in aperture. It's a constant 2.8, probably what you spend $2,200 for on this lens. It does lack OSS, so when you're filming, it doesn't have optical steady shot. Um, but if you're filming on the Sony a7 III, the Sony a7 R 3 the 4, then you have IBIS in-body, um, so in-body stabilization, which kind of does most of the work. I haven't had any lenses but OSS. If you want an OSS lens, you've got to look at the Zeiss Sony 24-70 f4, which is a stop, um, two stops, um, three stops, um, ten stops. How many stops is that? No, I'm joking. Um, darker. And it's a little bit smaller. It's not as good a lens in my personal opinion. You can also look at the Tamron 2875, um, which is a third of the price of this, this lens. And um, it's an awesome lens. It's also a 2.8 fixed lens. So getting back to being a filmmaker, um, you will be extremely happy with this lens as a filmmaker. Um, I am, I've used it for a long time and I really, um, I really treasure it um, in my kit. Things that I wish it had, well, OSS I'm guessing is one of them. It would probably help with the smoothness of your like, of your motion. Another thing is um, a distance measurement, like it will tell you where your focus is, that, comes on the screen, I guess, because it's focused by wire, so it doesn't matter where it is. And also an aperture ring <clears throat> that is clicked and declicked, because if you're a cinematographer and you're filming and you're going into different light situations, you can very seamlessly and smoothly um, change the aperture, so the lightness and darkness um, of your image when you're going in and out of different situations, if you don't want to use autofocus, that is, and have full control. So yeah. That is this lens in a nutshell. I've been using it for about a year and I absolutely love it. If you have any questions at all about it, just drop them in the comments. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I would really, really appreciate it if you did and help me out. And yeah, my next films, I'm gonna have a lot of reviews and I'm gonna start doing how to films similar to um, Daniel Schiffer and Peter Lindgren. I'm just gonna show you guys how I film, how to get shots like I do and yeah gonna catch you on the next one.